to get this even this far in your first proposal. Yeah. Really well, it's a it's a beautiful, touching piece. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, it and was the letter of intent, and then the first proposal with budget and everything, and then now more questions. Yeah, asking for and details. that's the thirty first. Yeah, yeah the very specific design question. How do you secure it? Apply. Uh, how do you safety lighting? How, you know, so they all of that stuff. Right, and I don't know, where's Corey? Corey knows a thing or two about that. <laughs> Last year, um, Jedi Dog Temple. Oh, yeah. yeah, you know, which, you know, kudos to you. <laughs> Definitely, but, you know, if you're interested in doing those letters of intent, how, what's the process like? What, what, what kind of questions are gonna ask me? What do they expect me to do? You know, Corey's a great resource for that. We, we're lucky, we have a lot of people in our community who've done these projects, you know, Josh and Cody. I mean, you guys know how to help people get their, turn their concept into reality and take it out to the dirt. So um, we're lucky here we have a, a, a juggernaut of information. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I, most of us have been going to Burning Man for a while and we know about the art projects, but for the newbies, whatever goes up has to go down. It has to be anchored. In order to burn something, you have to go through permit processes, all kinds of things. They have to put DG down so you're not burning the playa. The playa has to be ta taken away, DG put down. After the event, the DG has to be taken back out, the playa has What's to be put DG? back in. Uh, I don't know what that's called. Granite. 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 Yeah, so they okay. don't burn the playa. So yeah. our projects are very, very, very entailed and they're very, very regulated and there's all kinds of steps that you have to go through even once you get to the playa. Now, I work in the artery, I'm constantly saying, okay, there's FAST, there's ASS, which is art support or fire support, <laughs> and you know, ASS is uh, art support safety or something like that. So there's fast and ass and too is kind of hard too because it's just a little CD. Yeah. 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 And they take that to your coordinates and they have it on a big map. So it's very entailed. So it's not like you just can bring art. I mean, you can just bring art, but if you're going to put it on the playa, they're going to come find you and find out what you did to get it out on the playa. If you want to just keep it in your camp, you can keep it in your camp. They'll probably come by and make sure it's secure enough, but. Just so you know. Have they ever just removed like renegade art that's been out there? Yeah, they yeah. remove it if it if it um, doesn't if it's not lit and it's not. They'll just whisk it away. That take kind it of thing. There's actually a building code of assorted height yeah. limit not to be more than 14 feet unless it has prior approval, unless it's uh, pre-manufactured scaffolding put up according to the way it's supposed to go up. And yeah. there are people who go around and look at things and they go, oh no no no. That's a hazard. <laughs> Some catastrophic collapses of in poorly made structures causing injuries and damage and stuff. So it's, I mean, it's a big deal. Yeah, and there's a group called Eyes on Art. So anybody can be Eyes on Art. So if you're out in the playa and you see something that doesn't seem quite right, please come to the artery and tell us. Oh, you mean like the, the giant wolf head that was going up the town? Or the, 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 what was it on? spinning wheel that the people would go in the wheel like a giant rat wheel and it would spin the mind calendar thing uh -huh. that they had to spike because it was like oh something you'd eat alive in that not, right that's such a great idea so if you see something like that comment or tell a ranger either way it'll get to us sure and they also came out like reflect got an eyes on art because we were dark once, right and then they gave us light yeah they give it to you yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. so oh that's good to me so oh, okay um i know I'm going to try to see if we can move things along so that we can talk about the big question in a room, which is the regional um, event development proposals. So let's, let's talk about that right now. Uh, right, there's an opportunity to have a regional event created. Oh, quick question. Yeah, um, I wanted to talk about that. Um, I wanted to offer or step up and offer my services to lead next year. You guys need some to do that. Okay. Um, I did it in Denver for four years. I was the team leader there. Okay. And I, as I understand, there hasn't been a decompression in Vegas yeah. for years. And I want to, if I can help in any way with my experience and what I did in Denver, offer my services. Today. Was that a camping trip or a day event? <laughs> Was it, a, was it a camping trip or a so day event? Denver's decompression is currently a three-day event. We start on Friday with a volunteer party. It's not a camping event. It's okay. in the city, very similar to San Francisco's decompression. Um, 
And when I started, we, we had a year where there was no decompression. We had a lot of really passionate people, but nobody kind of really organizing everything. And there was you know, communication issues, and basically we got down the wire, couldn't find a venue, and the event didn't happen. So the next year, a bunch of us stepped up and said, okay, well, we're gonna make it happen this year. And of that original group, I was the only one that went on and continued to do it for the next couple of years. But basically, we wanted to do decom, not as much of a camping trip, because in October in Colorado, it can be pretty cold. Um, even though some burgers were like, fuck it out. So <laughs> um, but uh, we wanted to do a street fair, and also something that was friendly to burgers who were parents, so they could bring their kids during the day, which San Francisco also does. We really modeled it after SF. So Friday, we do a volunteer appreciation party. Which is basically a setup party where you know we ended up having 300 volunteers involved last year with Decom, where they can come, have some fun, do setup, and then Saturday is the main event. We had about 2,000 people, I think 50 art installations last year. We closed the street, kind of like San Francisco did, and then we had a club that provided a big venue space um, for the main portion of the event, art installations and art cars in the street. And then there's a burner warehouse across the street that we used as an after hours go to what street? Um, in Denver, mm -hmm. Walnut Street. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, and then Sunday is basically a teardown party where all the volunteers come tear down their art and, and people have fun with it. Um, so, I mean, it doesn't have to be that in Vegas. And honestly, I'm not attached to any vision. It's this is your community. Um, but to me, it's I, yours now too. It's my <laughs> time. When I heard that Vegas had had been for three years, I went, "That's just silly." There's so many. Creative people, event people, I mean, this is the entertainment capital of the world. Why wouldn't we be able to, to have an amazing impression here? Any city should, Vegas should. And really, I just want to offer my services as a facilitator. We have clearly an amazing community here of creative people who are capable. Um, and really, I would just want to help organize that and run the meetings and you know staff whatever roles we need and make sure we're organized and start planning in advance enough that it actually happens. So, Excellent. Any questions about that? Or? I think that's probably going to be, you will have to determine when it's going to be, and I, yeah. I mean, you'll, I'm sure so you're going to have people want to come to that. I mean, obviously the regional contacts need to get involved to talk to Steve Russ, but right, right, to give it a thumbs up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but we're kind of ahead of that. But, I mean, we start planning in Denver around March, April time frame, mm -hmm. so that we can get a venue picked well in advance, and then we're actually promoting the event, going into Burning Man, and really in the last couple of months, it's just budding up details with all the artists, and performers and all of the cool creative stuff that we want at the event as opposed to, as to logistics. Sure. Does that make sense? Yeah, makes perfect sense. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Uh, well, I'm willing to help. Okay, yeah. definitely. So, so yeah, if you guys are interested in getting involved with DCOP, come see me when this is done. I'd love to get your information. If you guys are on Facebook, I applied to the Burner group on Facebook today. Um, I don't know if that's worth affiliated with this community. It is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. And I'd, I'd really look forward to meeting all of you and, and helping. Thank you. Very good. Thanks for stepping up. <laughs> Duocracy in action. Okay, thank you. So we got D. Sante. My name is Sante. 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 Okay, so <laughs> Duocracy in action. So um, next, what we're doing pretty much are proposals right now. So you've got a concept, you want to be involved, you want to do the regional event, then now's the time for you to either find like-minded people to help you make it happen, submit your proposals. We haven't set up a deadline yet for when those promote propo proposals. It's to be today. No, it's supposed to be today. Well, I know, but that's like instant. You know, I mean, I'm willing to give people a little more time, like. No, yeah. announced it in the Facebook <laughs> I, saw, I saw it on the Facebook page. <laughs> But I guess we're extending the day. Yes, if we could, please. You know, because we're having, some people might have just heard about it now, or they yeah, weren't informed. We, you know, we set a hard deadline so that the person who does this doesn't face the same struggles. Absolutely, we don't want that. So why don't we say Wednesday? Is Wednesday reasonable yeah. enough? Yes. Wednesday? Okay. Deadline on Wednesday then. I'll make sure that's on the website and we can be clear wow. about that. My thing is, I want to make sure there's a bit of open area for folks who just heard about it or might want to, you know. It be inspired to do it. Okay, sorry. I'm one, two, and three. No, no. Yeah. Okay. So um, Wednesday's great, but it would be nice to know a hard deadline on when you're going to approve that process because we are yet again in the same place that Becca was last year. Sure. Where we're we coming up on ticket sales and coming up on. I got you. So seven days. Right, okay. Seven days after Wednesday. That seems reasonable to me. You know, so that's reasonable. So Wednesday's the deadline. By the following Wednesday, we'll know 
we'll, we'll get together and we'll, we'll go from there. Um, Gina, question? Yeah, I was going to say by February 1st. I think that's more of a... That's right there, yeah. Yeah, that's right there. Okay, very good. February that, 1st. That's like a hard date and that gives you, you have to have it in by midnight. Okay. Before the 1st. All right, very good. Bye. Well, I want to do that because I saw on the announcements that there's we get posted on there an email address or a contact where that proposal is yeah. supposed to go? That sounds great. <laughs> How convenient is that? There, we get the there was no real you want to It's all vague. You on Facebook, <laughs> yeah. you, yeah. Send you a psychic message. Yeah. Yeah. So and with that, the other thing I was going to put out there, or Gina was going to put out, one of us to put out there, is as always, whoever is chosen or whoever is working on a proposal to lead our regional or any other events for the community, as always, our company is there to provide all the public safety support you need, not only at the day, on the day at the event running your medical and fire safety programs, but as Becca discovered last year in the fire department, through the new lease I had to write at the end, and write a 25-page emergency action plan to satisfy the new code requirements. There's always <laughs> code changes no matter where you go. Those permitting and public safety legal issues are kind of We're here for so whoever you, gets that. Yeah. Sure. Can you so, introduce yourself? So. You know. Um, I'm Keith Jones. I'm the owner of Sundance Safety with my wife Gina. I'm the guy that's in the background doing a lot of paperwork. I'm out of here in a few days for doing the part, but Gina has been your director of public safety and emergency medical services for five or six years yeah. now. And she literally lives in the dirt with you guys in her little tiny trailer in her suburban from early <laughs> ends to last out. I think last year it was we were like some of the last our stuff was some of the last people out we were busy helping everybody else. And solving some problems for Becca at the last in trying to get some things taken care of for permit compliance and that. And most of you guys know my daughter Chloe. She usually runs around. Yeah. Fabulous. Super. <laughs> Chloe's the real boss. I know her. She's in charge. She runs Chloe's the boss. So make sure you give her lots of bacon. Um, <laughs> we are lucky to have you here. I mean, we don't have to outsource or anything. Your community members, you know, which is thank you again. They are in volume. Thank, thank you again. about that too. I mean, there are other obviously vendors out there, but one of the problems we've seen in this community over the years is you go to some of those vendors and they'll turn your event into a transport fest. You know, it's like, oh, you scraped your leg. That needs stitches. You need an ambulance ride. Well, you know, no bird wants a stack of ambulances coming in out of their event. It's really painful. Absolutely. No one leaves the event in an ambulance just absolutely positively happy. It's not they sleep a lot in the medical I was very fortunate back in the day that was long ago to have the opportunity to work with Rock Meds. Uh, you guys like have learned that. And we follow very much those principles that we're not going to impact the communities around us. We're going to keep our problems in our house. You know, just because you make accidentally made a poor recreational choice with your chemical enhancements doesn't mean that you need legal and medical entanglement. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, so, I mean, we're here for you guys. We're here to keep you guys safe. I'm thinking about this year because last year we had some LSD kids. So I'm thinking maybe this year maybe getting some really cool psychedelics for y'all. Oh. <laughs> you know, a couple cots, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, you guys would be like, oh, like, tweaking in there. <laughs> Don't laugh, People have no idea what you see behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> Wish you could just scratch out of your eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're I, we're very uh, self policing, you know. So we're lucky to have a group with us who can help assist us in that. But ultimately, it's up to all of us to be aware of what's going on in any camp at any given time. If something doesn't look right, then you know you've got to bring that to someone, either black a ranger you know, um, if they're around, or a event lead, um, because you're part of the system of making sure our events remain safe, and we can continue to have them, and that we honor whatever relationship we've established where we're doing the event, like Boulder City. That's a relationship we want to nurture and maintain. So we want to do whatever we can to foster that, because whether you like it or not, you represent this community when you're at the event. <laughs> so, you know, they see one burner doing something wrong, they're gonna think we're all like that. So, um, you know, don't discount that. Don't discount the impact that you have on the communities that we're involved with. And I think we're pretty good about self-policing, but, you know, just for those who don't know, that's, that's one thing about our community that I've always been very proud of, is we're pretty good at that. Um, any other proposals? Anybody's interested? Well, I mean, now, you know I, I said you guys have six page proposal. I did see that pop up. Yes. So, and I'll make sure that that uh, Las Vegas Burning Man Can, email. Uh, uh, yeah, but I don't want that published. Oh, no, that's your information. No, I mean, just the email so that. Yes, <laughs> trying to, 
not trying to blow your information yet, but, yeah. but we'll make sure that it's, it's uh, Use the sign. <laughs> steal all our secrets. <laughs> so, okay, very good. Thanks, guys. Um, uh, let's see. Um, just real quick on to, and then we'll move on to open discussion. Uh, whenever we plan these events, no matter what we do, it's all about creating safe spaces. Of course, based on what happened in um, Oakland, we never want to come up against anything like that here in Las Vegas. So we need, as I said, we represent our community. Um, if they know that there's a Burning Man event or people who are affiliated with Burning Man who've done an event and it goes wrong, it's not just you that's affected, it's their entire culture and community that's affected. Um, that fire was a pretty ca catastrophic thing, it was, it was terrible. But it sent this weird kind of shock throughout that entire area. So there's a number of, and, and around the world, not just Oakland, but around the world. So these warehouse spaces where a lot of us are used to functioning and creating art and, and doing, coming up with great ideas and concepts have now started to come under an extreme amount of scrutiny. So always be mindful when we put these events together, we not only have to worry about our safety, but the people who are at the event's safety. You know, I mean, our community safety, how we're perceived as responsible people who know how to throw safe and, you know, fun events. We, we forget how it reverberates. We're new, we're kind of, we're not new to the culture, but a lot of people are new to Burning Man culture now. So it's like we have to protect our ability to still be able to go and express ourselves in interesting spaces, which we like to do. Now, Corey, I was going to ask for your input on some of this. I mean, I know you are from New York, where they would use all kinds of interesting spaces to do events. <laughs> yeah. But you know, there's still, you don't want to sacrifice an interesting space for people's safety. And that's always the, the one thing that we want to, you don't want to skip a permit just to get a cool space. Right. You know, it, it's... Well, since your friends and family, <coughs> you do a cool party, So I'm going to open it up for discussion now. If there's anything any, you'd like to talk about, something gets on your mind. Um, oh, absolutely. No, this is my mic. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm tired of standing on one foot. <laughs> okay. Hi. Hey. Hi, Burning Man family. <laughs> um, it's, uh, this is kind of hard, but um, um, I'm going to tell you guys first. Um, I'm retiring from being a regional because <clears throat> whew, it has been a wonderful 20 years. From the first gathering with the founders of the organization to see the community spread worldwide, thank you. I don't want to cry for this. I'm supposed to be strong. <laughs> Go ahead, let that be. clear yourself. New York City was a hard place to find other people who embraced this crazy spirit. Once I found Burning Man, it changed my life. It changed my direction completely. I found my family, the others, the artists, the fun makers, the pranksters, the freaks the performers and the creators, the people who had a job to support their passions and had found the freedom in following them. Being a regional helped me bring home, home. Thank you. God, 
Well, <laughs> from the beginning of just four people sitting around a table in a cafe in lower Manhattan, for me, to the hundreds of thousands who attended the event and all the regionals around the world, things have changed quite a bit. More and more are influenced by Burning Man, and many have never and will never attend the event in the desert. We can only hope that this work continues and that the principles and character and spirit of Burning Man and its regionals are spread throughout the galaxy. Whew. That's a Star Trek thing. <laughs> <sighs> Moving forward from New York City Regional to Las Vegas, both have similar challenges on different timelines and scale. <clears throat> Moving to a new place and having an instant circle of friends and family is a gift, and thank you. Las Vegas is a loving community, and like New York, it has its challenges. Community is never easy. It means hard work. It means getting together for more than just a drink at a bar. It means making shit happen together. Yeah. And the doing of the making is the most important part. That's the special sauce. Because in the struggle and the strife of making the shit happen, something magical happens. You get to know each other and rely on each other and respect each other. That doesn't happen at the actual party always. That happens in the planning of the event or the artwork that you're building together. The outcome is nice, but that is not the reason for me to do things. It is a community that forms by the doing, the team of the friendships, the love and the accomplishment together that makes the magic happen. <clears throat> <sighs> and no other organization strives to make this magic happen year after year. No one, other one like Burning Man. And for that, I thank you. My own education has blossomed because of Burning Man. I've had incredible experiences, learned a great deal about people, production, organization, communications, and no school could have given me what you have given me. And I thank you. This is not the end but a beginning of something new for me. Because after yesterday, I feel like civic duty is calling me at this radical time in our history. Remember, the doers are the leaders, regardless of any title anyone gives you. Just do shit. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. bringing Burning Man, for bringing, thank you Burning Man for bringing light, creativity, and laughter into my life. And I hope that you continue on for many others to realize their strength and potential. Power to the people. I know how hard that was for you to do and don't make me cry. Um, <laughs> I heard about Miss Corey Mervis before I knew about certain regionals. Whenever I'd go to the regional summit, I always heard, of, who's this girl from New York? And Stephen Raspa would say, that woman knows how to organize. She knows how to get people motivated. So when she came down and she became part of our region, I felt we were very lucky. So I just want to say thank you for everything that you've given us, the energy you brought. Darn, that was a surprise. <laughs> um, talking about what are we going to do? Did you hear about what happened in Louisiana? Da, da, da. And at the time, there was not a lot of commute, ways of communicating with the outside world. So it was all kind of rumor, like it's Hurricane what? Her, Hurricane Kathy? Hurricane? Nobody knew what was going on. All they knew is that there was a regional from Louisiana who was not possibly going to be able to go home. If he did go home, he'd probably have no home. So like burners do, we try to problem solve. We know how to deal with situations when nobody else does. We know how to exist where there's nothing. You know, we create a city out of the desert. So Burners Without Borders has always been something I've been greatly attached to. We do some of it here. Um, at least I try to do some of it here. And I would like to invite you all to please participate in doing community events that benefit the community we live in. Now, of course, we've got a lot of wonderful things that happen when we feed the homeless every year. That's not a Burners Without Borders event. That's something that 
Bam Bam and Big E do on their own. But that's burners making something great happen where there's a huge need. So if you know of something where there's a huge need and you can see that something's not being filled, if you recognize it, then see if you can bring some of us along to help you fill it. Because that's really where our eye is kind of attuned to. We look at the world in a different way. And if you see a need, you never know. Someone else within our community may well want to join you in helping to solve a problem. Las Vegas has got a lot of things that are great about it, but then there's also things like any other city that we could possibly lay our hands on and help fix. Whether it's contributing more art to the streets, or helping the homeless population, or you name it. I'm sure there's things that I haven't even come, that come, haven't even come into my mind that you guys can think of that we can put our hands and our power and our energy into. We can always build art. We can always do that. We can always have a party. But I really feel that what's going to have a lasting impact here in Las Vegas will be those things that we do to help transform the community here. So please don't ever think that you don't have the power. You may not want to do an art project, but you may be able to transform someone's life by contributing some time to making the community better here in some way, shape, or form. Whether it's going along a trail and picking up trash for a day, if it's something you feel like you want to do, then invite a bunch of us along to help you out. There's funds available through Burners Without Borders to help put into the local community to help fund a project. If you're interested in it and you think that you can make a difference, then put that proposal forward. Last year I posted something um, back in, I think it was May or June, about funds that were available from burners without borders that could be utilized in any community. Many regions around the country have done some great things with $50, $100, $300. I don't think we're any less powerful or insightful than they are. I feel we can do the same. Go ahead. Why don't we attach the um, op Operation uh, Teddy Bear Drop to like a homeless, um, like, you know, like, look, like toothpaste and brush, you know, toothpaste and, Great idea. To, uh, you know, like toothbrushes and deodorant and, and like, need. yeah, like personal need kits. Socks. And then we can get the Girl Scouts to put those kits together. So, and cares. Yeah, exactly. And then, and then we can all go down as a group, you know, you guys and the Girl Scouts can all go down and deliver those to St. Vinny's or Shade Tree or something like that. That's excellent. <laughs> you know, and like, it just, even if you have the, the, the slight inclination to do it, like Gary did the Magical Forest, you know, this year we had some people go out and volunteer their time yeah. to, to make a, a, a small difference. That's all. So if it's been in the back of your mind, don't yeah, worry about bringing it to the forefront. Get them all together, and right? Can all put the kids together, and then we can all. And we don't have a lot of things really that our kids can participate. No, in and the kids burners. can participate in that. Right. Time. You know, the Girl Scouts can show them how to put the kids. You bring your kids. Have your kids put them together. You know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. And then have the kids deliver them with the Girl Scouts. You know, and then that that gives the kids the idea of community, community and giving. You know. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's just Make not... Make it a kid event. Well, we don't really have a lot of things right now that kids can kind of participate exactly. to, That's which right. goes back to what Mike was saying about, you know, if we, we're thinking about creating these events, then let's do a picnic. Let's do something where we can bring not only, you know, we can bring kids. We can have relatives who are not familiar with what the Burning Man crowd is like. They can right. come to an event like that and get a sense of what our community is, is really all about. So, anybody have anything else they'd like to say? Go right ahead. I'd like to address uh, some of the recent developments in the Helco product line. I know maybe you're best. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just saw a big scratch last week, and there's some very exciting developments going on in the, the realm of the sole acquisition. Now, it's true that some of our sole bag securities have fallen apart in the, the not for profits profit transition. However, I assure you that for most of you, our most popular product, the Eternity Fund, it's still very much so in the black. So there's nothing to be worried about. We're, nothing to, we're going down, baby. We're all the way down, because down is up. <laughs> this is the next four years. I wish you could tell the story about Helco. That would be oh, Helco. Yeah, that's 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 a story. story. Yeah, I would. I love those scary stories. Exactly. Years. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't there, so I'm like, all right. Tony. I was worth telling. For a little short moment, I think so. Uh, when I was in the Navy, I was a Navy Seal, and I was in the Navy for 
we are always concerned about Burning Man selling out. You know, we just don't know how long ago it sold out. So it's uh, about 94. <laughs> really small event, and someone said, my God, I bet you're going to sell out next year. So the suspense was so great that in 1996, the sale was made to Elko Industries, and forever after, you could never say Burning Man is going to sell out because it officially sold to Elko Industries in 1996. Uh, lots of fun was had by one and all, uh, uh, and, uh, and we have been sold since. Uh, life has been good. We were always concerned. What if we sold out? Not recognizing it happened. It's done. It has to sell. It's already finished. So it's not so bad. We don't need to sold out, it turns out. We're having it happen 20 years ago. The first one was a great day of fireworks. The first one was a great day of fireworks. The first one was a great day of fireworks. Thank you for coming. Well, thank you everyone for coming. It's 5 o'clock. Our time is done. Thanks for, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, If there's something you'd still like to dialogue about, please feel free to go to the page we created for the town hall event and put your concerns there. Also, I'll go ahead and post any links that we spoke about today. And if you could please put the tables and chairs back, that would be brilliant. Thank you.